Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of From the Heart. I'm your host, Chloe Turcha. I'm fired up. I am so excited about this episode. Last week, if you watched, I had a guest on and it was so nice to talk to Katie. We talked all about being a teacher, being actively a Christian in a public school. It, like, it's just so many good, just rich topics. So definitely go and listen to that if you haven't. But because I had a guest on, I haven't like chatted with you guys. I haven't poured my heart out and like what's been going on. And these last two weeks have been very good to me and not an easy way necessarily, but I've learned a lot. I feel like I've had a lot of like awareness. I've learned a lot of lessons. I really like channeled in and tuned in and fine tuned a lot of stuff. Um, and honestly, I credit a lot of it to one God, always God. He is everything. He does everything. But also my boyfriend, I think God has kind of really been heavy on our hearts to rewire, reprogram and like focus in. And we've been using each other to hold each other accountable. We've been like, honestly, elevating each other and elevating our relationship. And there's guys, I'm just so excited. There's so much to talk about. Um, but essentially the topic of this episode is just going to be why having structure and a program to follow is key to being successful um, and accomplishing your goals. And I'm going to be honest, like we're just jumping in like we usually do. I have notes. I have a few notes in this because randomly like things were kind of coming to me this week and I was listening to a podcast. I want to credit Ed Millette, his like second to most recent one. Um, it's about like mastering your mind and stuff. Um, he had a lot of really good things to say and there were some things that I noted and I'll obviously credit him, but popped out to me and I'm like, I want to share this with you guys. It's good. It's rich. If you guys don't listen to his podcast, listen to Ed Millette. Me and like Kyler, my boyfriend, listen to them every single week. They're so good. I listen to him at the gym. I listen to him on my runs. I really don't listen to music anymore unless it's like worship. I pretty much just listen to podcasts. But anyway, I, I kind of had to get real with myself and I do that often. You guys are probably like, we've heard this before, but like genuinely I had to hold myself accountable and Kyler and I were like, well, actually he came to me and he was like, I think we should like sit down and like share our goals because me and him are very big dreamers. We have very big goals, but we had never really like specifically sat down, wrote them out, communicated them with each other, and then kind of set like little, you know, mini smart goals, like they say, smart, measurable, attainable, and like within a timely manner or something like a time period to it. Goals, you know, like you have to break it down and make it seem achievable and have a plan for a goal. You can't just have a goal and magically think you're going to get there. I do think visualizing is key to achieving your goals and like speaking it to his ex existence does a lot, but also you have to take steps to get there. You can't just like hope and pray for the best. So anyway, the first thing he did was he came to me and he was like, these are my goals. And we were literally in Oregon. So me and him had to kind of take a random emergency trip to Oregon, but it was actually such a beautiful, fun time together. Um, but we had to go visit one of his family members who was sick. Um, but it was so cool because I got to see like where he grew up. It was just such a wholesome weekend. I documented a lot of it. Um, I have a vlog on it on my YouTube channel and I also just posted it all over TikTok and Instagram. If you don't follow me, give me a follow, but I feel like most of you probably come from there anyway. Um, but we were there and we literally, guys, it was so much fun. If this was like, it's so crazy because when I prayed for like a person in my life, this is the stuff I was praying for. And a little bit, I didn't even know this is the things I wanted. I knew deep down, but like, I never specifically was like, I want to be sitting at a table talking about our goals. But like we're literally doing that. And like, you can find a person to do that with, I promise. Um, but we were sitting there and it was his idea. And I was like, I love this cause I love this stuff, but it just didn't occur to me to do this myself, which I don't know why. But if you've never sat down and communicated goals with your significant other, your best friend, your sibling, your parent, like somebody like that, share your goals with somebody because it's so important. Um, and maybe I can do a whole episode on my goals if you guys are curious, but honestly, they're just personal to me. I have one on my like new year's resolution goals, but these are more specific to these next six months. Um, because it's, it was like early June when we had this conversation. So it was kind of cool timing, but it's never too late to start on a goal too. Don't think you have to wait till new year. You can start whenever. Um, but we were sitting there and he went through all of his, and then I went through all of mine. And it was so cool because it really one gets, gets you to know your significant other or gets you to know that person on a deeper level. Like what people really hope and dream about it can almost be scary to communicate, you know, and to share that because you have that fear of, oh gosh, what if I don't achieve this? Am I going to look like a failure? No. Like, I think it's so bold to set a goal one and two to like 
say it out loud like that is so powerful i knew like sitting there saying these things that i knew deep down i wanted to accomplish but i never had written out and shared with anyone it was honestly out of fear that i wouldn't be able to do it and even if you don't like at least you have the courage to do so and i always say like set the bar high because even if you don't achieve it you'll fall far like shoot for the moon because if you don't reach the moon you'll fall like among the stars or something like that like you'll fall way above where you probably would have initially set the bar to so that's kind of my mantra but most of these things I really do see myself accomplishing by the end of the year um, but we sat down and we went over all of it and I was kind of like I was really I was really excited I was really motivated but I had to like break it down because it's I'm sitting there and I'm like, you know what? There's going to be moments where I'm not always motivated. There's going to be moments where I'm not always excited. I don't want to accomplish this. You know, I'll kind of like get off this little high of my goals and then it's going to be reality and I'm going to get back into, I don't know, what I was doing before. And I cannot explain to you though how wrong I was because just setting those goals, it reignited something in me that I feel like I constantly have something to be working towards and nothing gets like heavy nothing feels overwhelming because i have steps and i have actions to get there i have somebody supporting me and who knows my goals and who will, will hold me accountable it's kind of like okay you said you wanted to do this like is this decision is this choice that you're making is this going to set you up to succeed is this going to get you one percent closer to that goal um and him and i will call each other out on it you know and sometimes it's a little it's like tough love, you know, uh, but I think that's healthy in a relationship, especially when you're depending, not depending. So I don't think you should depend on another person, but, um, I don't know when you have them as your support, like you just understand that it's out of love anyway. Um, but no, like setting these goals made me sit down and reflect and make plans for this stuff. And I was like, you know what? The key to unlocking all of this and achieving these goals is, program and structure it all boils down to that like every single one of my goals it either was something that I needed to implement into my morning routine or I needed to be more structured with my nighttime routine or I needed to follow a program for example I want to feel more fit and healthy and just like agile like I feel like I've been in a lull I haven't really been motivated in the gym in a really long time like I go I always show up but I don't ever like walk out of the gym and be like that was really good unless it was like a really hard run like my long runs which one I hadn't even been doing in a while so I haven't had that like fire after a workout being like dang I really killed that um until I started writing my hybrid gym program and that's where this stemmed from you guys so if you didn't know I've been talking about it a bit on my Instagram and it actually launches tomorrow so it's already launched by the time you guys see this but on my app I'll give you a quick little detail rundown um but it was uh it's $15 a month. The first week's free. It's on my app. It's linked to my bio. It's through Playbook. Um, and you have access to my other gym program as well. And then some random like one-off solo like bodyweight hit workouts. Anyways, it'll be like six, it's three runs a week, three lifts a week, all full body hitting anterior, posterior, then like agility, speed, power. That's what it is. But when I say every single workout I have done for the past, I'm going on, I'm on my third week. I'm like halfway through my third week. I feel so accomplished. I start my day like that. And if I don't start my day like that, I always, I hold myself accountable when I do the workout at the end of the night. And it's so funny because guys, I'm a personal trainer. I'm certified. I am a coach for other clients. I write out my gym program every week, but for the last, like, as long as I can remember, like two years, I've been walking into the gym and I just write my own workout on the spot. Cause like I have the knowledge, I have the experience. I've been doing this for what, like eight years. Like I know how to structure a workout. But when I tell you it's so easy to sell yourself short in the moment, like you will, I promise you will. You'll walk in there and I'll be like, oh, I'll hit the glutes. I'll hit like the belt squat. I'll hit thrust, I'll RDL. I do the same like four exercises and that's not a bad thing. Doing the same exercise is actually good. If you like progressively overload, you know, you can grow strength and whatever. But I wasn't doing that, honestly, just kind of going through the motions. And I was doing the exercises that I knew weren't like brutal. And there was never those sets where I was like power through, power through. But having a pre-written workout, and this is why I think having a coach is so important or like paying for a program, like essentially I'm, I am following my own program. I rewrite it like a week in advance. So, like I have to do it. I don't make it up on the spot. I write it. I'm like two weeks ahead of myself in my like workouts um, that I have written. So I can look two weeks ahead and know what I'm going to be doing. But I actually don't like doing that because <laughs> sometimes I'm like, dang, like I really be humbling myself. I'm humbling my own self throughout this because these workouts are freaking hard. I'm not even kidding. Um, but like I show up and I'm the type of person, like I'm not, not going to do what I have written no matter what, if I commit to something, like I'm going to do it 
honestly, before though, I knew that about myself. And so I didn't give myself anything to commit to because I knew that was hard. Don't do that. Don't make the same mistake I did. Honestly, I was like unaware I was doing it until I had to be real with myself, have this conversation with Kyler, reflect on my goals. And then it kind of occurred to me and I was like, oh dang, okay, that's kind of what's been going on. So I have this workout program. I'm obsessed with it. Like I probably getting annoying about it on social media, but like I am so on fire for the gym right now. And it's so nice because I feel like that passion, that drive, the motivations there again, that sparks there. Like the workouts are freaking hard. Like I'm there, I'm like, huffing and puffing. I'm humbled. Like some of the exercises, I'm like, dang, Chloe, why'd you program this? Like the reps are, it's a lot of reps or it's heavy or whatever. But I walk out feeling so accomplished because I knew I did what I said I was going to do. And that is how you build confidence. And that is one way to do it. So not that you have to buy my program, which it's great. It's a great hybrid program. Definitely not beginner friendly though. I would suggest going to my gym program for that. Um, this is more a, intermediate to advanced hybrid. So it's like running, um, and lifting, but anyway, it's, it's freaking fire and I love it. And I'm obsessed and I feel so good. Um, and that actually reminds me that kind of brings me to a point that I have written down because a lot of people think, um, that when you magnify one area in your life, that it's going to take away from other areas. So when I'm really putting myself and a lot of energy into the gym, people are like, often use that as an excuse to not do that because they're like, oh, it's pulling away from your relationship or from work or from God. Like, no, when I magnify, when I am on fire in one area, you guys, that fires me up to want to be on fire in every area of my life. Like I'm so much more motivated. I'm so much more excited for work. And when I'm doing good and working in the gym, I'm a better person. So I'm my relationships are benefiting. I'm more excited. I have more energy. I want to be more social. Like it all benefits. And then when I'm on fire with that, like comes a lot of valleys and peaks and everything. And I just want to like glorify God through it. And it honestly strengthens my like relationship with God too, because I don't, it just does. It just does. So when you're magnifying one area, it genuinely expands and magnifies every other area. So don't use that as an excuse to be like, I don't have time to pour into the gym right now because I'm focusing on my relationships. I promise if you're on fire in the gym, you're going to create a better version of you and you're going to be more on fire in the church. You're going to be more on fire at work. You're going to be more on fire as a parent or a friend or a spouse, best friend. Like I, it all connects. It really, really does. So don't get that twisted. Um, but anyway, see, can you tell I'm on fire about this? Like I am so excited to chat. So sorry if I'm talking really fast or intensely, but it's just going to be one of those episodes this week. Um, anyway though, so I have that program written and just like every single one of my goals, like it all has structure. It all has program. It all has routine. And a lot of times I think when I get tired, when I get lazy, it's when my routines are falling and when they're failing, when I'm not holding myself to that exact routine. And it's like, oh, this is one thing, um, that Ed Millette said, and he also said that thing about magnifying, um, and focusing in one area, whatever he talked about that. And I was like, he's so right. And then it made me think of all this. So anyway, another thing that he said was that, um, holy cow, I just lost my train of thought. Oh, successful people, successful people, you guys give a hundred percent every single day in areas where most people do it every couple days. So it's like, if you want to be successful, you got to do it every single day. That's what sets you apart from average and like excelling is you got to do it when you're not excited. You got to do it when you're not motivated. You got to do it when you're sad. You got to do it when you're busy. Like that's, what's going to set you apart. And so the secret to that is having routine and having structure because you don't have to think twice about missing it. If it's program, if it's pre-planned, I always say preparing to fail or pre- failing to prepare is preparing to fail. If you don't have a plan, if you don't have like a set route, you guys, as humans, I talked about this before, like we go the least resistant route. If you create a pathway for yourself to succeed, you're going to succeed. It's when you don't have it pre-planned and you don't have that route created, you're not going to do it because that seems confusing and hard. But when you have those steps in place, you're going to follow them. It just, it is that it just is what it is. It's crazy. But why, okay, sorry, I'm reading this. Why don't people do things consistently? So this is one thing Ed was talking about. And it's like, because a lot of times too, it's like, why can't I stay consistent? I can stay consistent for two weeks and then I fall off. Like I'm guilty of it. It still happens. We're human. I learn from it. But it's like, because consistency isn't exciting. 
it gets boring after a while. This hybrid program, I'm on fire because it's new, but I got to tap into it when it starts getting boring. I have to have a reason why. And so sharing those goals, having those specific goals, having you guys doing my program too, being like, if, if I'm going to have them do it, like I have to show up and do it myself, like creating external motivators it's huge. It's, it's huge in success. And so you have to understand like, it's going to get boring, but those successful people, they are able to persevere through that. And it takes a lot of perseverance and it's hard. And that's why not everyone's hyper successful in every single area. That's why a lot of people are like fall at an average. And if that's all you want, then that's all you want. But I know if you're listening to this, like you don't want that. So that was a word. Okay. I'm on fire. I'm on fire. Um, and oh, this is another good thing. And it kind of goes into all this, but it was, he was saying that, um, there really isn't a big difference between winning and losing. We just act like there's a secret as an excuse. So it's like, we want to create a reason why we're not winning because it's going to take sacrifice. It's going to take some hard work, but there's really not that much difference between winning and losing. It's really just about consistency. Like there's no secret. And we all think that there's a secret to unlock. You know, there's a secret in real estate. There's a secret in the gym. There's secrets to being successful, making a lot of money or losing a lot of weight or building all this muscle. You know, I almost guarantee like, you know, pretty much exact steps to get you closer to that goal. If not exactly to where you want to be. I'm not saying you're going to magically lose 30 pounds, but I promise you, you guys know the basics on how to lose weight, calories in versus calories out eating your protein, moving your body, like low intensity, steady state cardio is great for fat loss. Like getting in your macronutrients, like, you know, the ways to do it, but we act like there's like some secret hack or secret that we are lacking. It's not. Most things are so simple. Trying to like become wealthy, make more money. How do I do that? Well, think of the ways you're making money now. It's, it's simple, like save more money. Like we just, we overcomplicate it to make ourselves feel better as to why we're not doing it. Because we just, I don't know if it's a form of self-sabotage. I don't know if it's a form of like laziness or, um, our own like insecurity of failing. Like there's a million reasons. There's a million reasons as to why we're not doing it, but like, there's really not much difference between winning and losing. You just got to do it, you know? And that's why I'm saying programming and routines are so huge because when you have that path set and you have those goals and you have those steps, you just follow it and you stay consistent and you'll achieve it. It really is that simple. Like it really is that simple. And when I tell you guys like the proof, like I'll be honest. Okay. Actually, let's get real here. If you're listening, we're getting deep into this. Um, a lot of this, a lot of this stemmed from, and it's kind of just reminded me was right before Oregon, you guys, the day before I went on this trip, young LA dropped me and I'm going to be honest. Did it sting a little bit? Yeah. Did I know it was going to happen? I did because there's specific deliverables I have to hit to stay with the company. There's a certain amount of like metrics and sales and stuff. And I knew I hadn't promoted it. I knew I hadn't pushed it, but it was one of those things where I felt guilty for not giving it my all. Like I easily could have hit those. I'm going to be honest. That is not me ego. Like humbly saying this, like I know I could have achieved it. I did the first two months and I did in the third month because I got lazy and I got comfortable because the first two months I did it and I was like, Oh, not as hard. I was grinding the first month to promote, to push, like really doing my job. And I slacked the third month. I did. And it's my own fault. And I had to take ownership of that. And it was a big lesson. And honestly, it's like such a blessing because I think a lot of my ego was also attached to being with young LA. And I think it stripped me from a lot of the real reasons that I make content and the kind of content I wanted to create. And it's a blessing in disguise. Do I want to work with them again in the future? Possibly. Like I have no bad blood with them. Like I respect them. That was They set those standards at the beginning and I knew that going forward and they were always very respectful, very nice. Like the process of it, like it's business, it's life, that's reality and we're going to fail, but it opened my eyes and I was like, damn, you know what? Like, I think I got too comfortable with where I'm at. I haven't grown on Instagram much at all in the past year. And I'm like, I blamed it on so many other excuses. Oh, the algorithm. Oh, like this or that. And you guys, I sat there and I tapped into goals and I talked to Kyler about it. And I actually am treating my Instagram account more strategically of being like, cause I was always scared. I used it as an excuse to being like, I don't want to treat my Instagram like a business because it's like my passion. But in reality, you guys, Instagram is part of my job. It's how I make my income. It is my business. It is. And I got to treat it like that. And so I have to be smart and look at my analytics and be like, Oh, this did good. Like people enjoyed this kind of content. It's not me like being inauthentic, 
it's me being like, hey, what kind of content do people enjoy and where can I bring value to my platform? That's all I'm doing. But I was like only looking at it in a certain way so I could avoid having to do what was harder, you know? I don't know. I was scared to fail, whatever. But now that I have a set goal, I have strategic plans, I pre-plan my content more. I have like more of a program and more of a structure to when I post and how I post and the videos I'm creating and stuff. One, I'm way more excited and passionate about the content. I don't know if you guys follow me, but like my brother even brought it up to me out of the blue after Oregon. He's like, cool, your content's been good recently. And I was like, that means a lot. Thank you. Like a lot of people don't tell me that anymore, but I think I just got comfortable because I had achieved something I thought I wasn't even going to achieve. And that was like hitting hundred K I had hundred K and like literally since then it's really kind of been like a plateau and I just kind of accepted it. So I was like, you know what? I already accomplished this, but like deep down, I want to be able to reach and impact more people than that. And it's not about, it's, it's not the ego of, I have a million followers, but like, I truly feel like God has given me a platform to like spread his word and spread his goodness and share my experiences that he's put me through to help others like genuinely. And it's like, I want to be able to help as many people as I can, but I also understand God won't give those people and give me that until it's time until, and maybe there never will be time. Maybe the, I'm only impacting the right amount of people and exactly who he wants me to impact. But if you're listening to this, like he wanted me to impact you. So I know that there's a word in here that's you need to hear. Um, but anyway, it really like lit this fire inside of me and it made me be more strategic. It made me set goals. It made me reflect. And it kind of gave me a little fire. It's a, it was a little like kick in the butt that I needed. Honestly, or a little slap in the face of being like, don't think you can, you know, like accomplish anything or get with anything because honestly, you guys, Young LA was like a big brand. Like that was a big goal. And if you're with Young LA, like there's not, in my opinion, there wasn't for me, for me personally, there wasn't like another brand above Young LA. So it's almost like I achieved it. And then it was like not as fulfilling. It was not as exciting. Clearly, like I slashed by the third month. I wasn't even an athlete. Like I was still on my trial. And so all that to say, having goals, structure and routine is so important And you got to get real with yourself and you got to share those goals and you have to be willing to be uncomfortable, you know, and like reach for really high achieving goals. And I don't know, it was just, it all like really fell into place at a really good time. But also too, what I was going to say is like, since doing that, since being in Oregon, I've like, my content has been performing so much better. I feel like you guys are engaging and gaining more from it. It's been more authentically me. It's stuff I'm excited to post. I feel more creative, inspired. Like I'm constantly, I'm like, you should see my notes app. It's crazy. So many ideas. I'm so much more at peace and at ease because I don't have this like constant level of like stress and anxiety that like I'm never going to grow again. It's like I'm taking action. I'm doing what I can for the first time in like a long time since like the beginning of it. Um, I'm Honestly, like I'm kind of looking at it like I'm square one because I think I got, I got too, uh, I need to be humbled. I think my ego was like coming through and not the way I wanted to. Like the enemy was <laughs> grabbing that. Okay. And I was like, no, no, we're putting that away. We're putting that aside because I'm no different than I was at zero followers to hundred K to wherever I'm at. And I, I needed to be reminded of that, that anything can be stripped of you at any time. And two, I think if you hold something above God, and that was another thing. Um, there was this really good conversation I had in my Bible study the other day, but it was like, one, you can't have anything. You can't idolize anything. And I think I began to idolize my platform in a not the in like the wrong ways, okay? And it wasn't a way to glorify God. It wasn't a way to bring value. It was just in the wrong ways. And I in my heart intentionally that was not what I was out to do it's just what happened and I had to like open my eyes and I'm gonna be like I'm being honest like this is like hard to talk about a little embarrassing but like it's reality and I feel like we've all probably done this in at least one area of our life but anyway it's like I am treating myself like I'm starting from zero again and I have that fire and I have the motivation and I have that drive and it's exciting and I like feel I'm telling you guys, like when I say one thing magnifies, everything else does. The gym's magnifying, my work's magnifying, my relationship with Kyler's magnifying through this. Like, I just feel better. I really do. And I'm so excited and I'm I'm on fire. Um, but another thing, and this kind of goes into this, is a lot of times, you guys, when we're winning, 
So whatever you have a goal, whenever you feel like you're like taking steps forward and um, when you are maybe winning, it doesn't feel like you're winning. And I don't know, like it kind of sucks to say that, um, but like you're always going to feel like you're in the grind because you're working and the work you have to do isn't fun all the time. It's not necessarily easy. It can be a little overwhelming. It can be a little stressful, but um, understand that like you are still growing and you're getting better even if it doesn't feel like that. Um, cause I know a lot of you are like, I'm doing all these things, like I'm trying, but if you're getting 1% better, you guys, that's a win. Um, so just remember that and just know that, um, in those hard times, wanted to bring that up. Um, let's look at my notes, see if there's anything else that I want to talk about. Yeah. A big thing that he said though, was just people who are winning, people who are succeeding, people who are achieving their goals. They aren't just doing things occasionally. They're doing things every single day. And it's like, these are all these steps that I've been making these past few weeks. Like, these are things I have to maintain for three months, three years, like forever. As long as I, it takes me to achieve those goals, like I have to take those steps. Um, and a lot of times we fall off, you know, like something comes up. I travel. I, I don't know. I got a boyfriend, like little things in life. There's going to be hiccups. There's going to be little things that reroute you, but you have to get back on track as fast as you can or do the best thing you can to mitigate like the resistance on it because another thing I'm telling you when you're winning the enemy's gonna do everything he can to stop that so you gotta praise praise God give him everything give him control and honestly too just like turn it over to God and another thing I want to talk about is because this is a lot of grind this is a lot of hustle this is a lot of like work 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 I'm like preaching about not preaching but like speaking about um but one thing me and my girls on our in our bible study talked about was like rest is good you need to rest, you need to take a break. And a lot of times we don't give ourselves enough space in our head to sit, process and let like God speak to us and let him fill us up. Um, because he's always there. But a lot of times I think we get so busy and we tune him out and we get distracted. Um, and so you have to allow time and space. And it was a really cool story. One of my friends, um, I'm not gonna say specifics or names or anything, but, um, she was talking to us and she was like, guys, we need to be okay with like being a little easier on ourselves when something maybe doesn't come to us because a lot of our jobs because all three of us are like on social media we're creators if we don't have inspiration we don't have a video idea like if we feel overwhelmed and stressed rather than like putting out a crappy quality picture or like clip or video or reel or whatever to get content up like maybe that's god being like you know what take that time instead of posting and be with me sit with me i have something else to tell you like open the bible and instead of opening our freaking phone for inspiration open the bible And I was like, girl, we were all like, preach, preach, preach. That's a word. And she literally was like, no, today, like she was being honest. She's like, today, like I was stressed. I didn't have content. Like I was complaining to um, her like partner. And she was like, I just had to take a step back and just accept it and be like, it's okay. Like this, God wants me to be with him right now. And like, it's okay if I don't have creativity. And God like wants us to be creative. He gives us these platforms. Like it's not a bad thing thing that we like we all essentially they're all Christians all these girls clearly um and we're all like in the fitness industry but he's given us our creativity he's given us our talents our passions for a way to it's like a vessel our platforms are a vessel to spread his word and it's like he gave us creativity so if we don't have any it's probably him giving us a reminder like we need to spend time with him but anyway really cool story she literally talked about this to us that day And then the next morning, you guys, she got an email as she was resting and praying with God. She got an email and it was her biggest brand deal she's ever gotten in her entire career. And she was like, that's such a godsend. And that was such a reminder. And just sent from him and being like, be obedient, trust in him, rest, spend time with him. And he will deliver and he will, you will reap reward. And I think that's so cool. It gave me, it just gave me chills again. It gave me chills when I read that message and I was like, that's so cool. And that's so beautiful. Um, and he's just so good. Like God is so good. And I think a lot of times I resist being obedient because I think it's like counterproductive, but like, that's the most productive thing you can ever do. So never let yourself think that like when you're too busy and it's like, Oh, I don't have time to open my Bible. Like I need to go to the gym. I need to do this. I have a meeting at this time. I have this, I have this. You're never too busy for God. Okay like ever like that's just like like I don't even know I don't even have words to like explain that but it's like you're never too busy for him and I always I love saying like the word before the world I like started my mornings with the bible do I do it every single day no no I don't should I yes and that's not an excuse I need to get better at it but 
even listening to a Christian podcast, like it puts me in a different headspace, being surrounded by that, having that in my head. Like I, when I feel like I'm pulling away and I don't feel as close to God, it's when I'm not listening to my worship music, when I'm not listening to like Christian podcasts, like for example, really good ones that I love are Girls Gone Bible, um, Christ with Coffee and Ice by Ali Ho a hoist, host, ho- whatever, um, Emmy Morris, Save Not Soft, like, those are the three that I pretty much have on cycle all the time, and I love them, um, and I'm sure there's a lot more, those are just the three that I listen to, but when I listen to those, and I'm listening to my worship music, and I'm, like, going to church, and I'm surrounding myself with my friends, like, I just feel so much better, I feel so much better, and life just is so much better, so, it's another thing, they need to make sure you're structured and routined in, and never slack in, because you need God, you need the word, um, you really do. So anyway, that was a lot. I don't even know how long this episode is. I was on fire. I was talking really fast. So we probably got through it quicker than I think. I'm looking through my notes. Um, but yeah, you guys, we just need to continue to be consistent with our goals and be specific with our goals. Sit down, write them down and share them with someone. Do it. I pro like you guys, my content has literally been doing better. My Instagram has finally grown again. Like it is so crazy. And it's like, it works. Just trust me. It works. Um, and, but the biggest thing is be obedient to the Lord, um, and glorify him and give him because he is the reason for all of it. And so like all the gratitude goes to him. It's not me doing something. It's him, but I'm just trusting in him and I'm doing it through him. And I feel like that's when like the right things happen, you know, but it's not always going to be right. God is going to humble you and he will teach you. And there's like peaks and valleys. I always talk about that, but there's always a blessing. Um, in the mess. There really, really is. And any bad can be turned good by God. Any evil can be turned good. So yeah. Anyway, I feel like that's a good place to stop. I don't really know what else I want to say other than I'm telling you when something doesn't necessarily go right, like me getting dropped, it can turn into a really beautiful, amazing thing. And it has. And so you have to take action and control for that though. Um, so yeah. Anyway, that's all we have for this week. (laughs) That was a lot. Um, And yeah, I just want to thank you guys for listening. I absolutely adore all of you. You guys mean the world to me. And I hope you have an amazing, blessed, beautiful rest of your day or whenever you're listening to this. But bye, and we will chat next week.